What's up guys? This is the second video of me building an ultralight road bike on specialized ATSS Works frame set. And I want to mention straight away that apart from it being light, I wanted it to look nice and also be comfortable. So what that means in reality is that some of the parts that I'll be using on the bike, even though they are really, really light, they might not be the lightest available on the market, uh, but they've been tested by me before and they look really good. The frame has been painted <laughs> to start with, so I've already added some grams to it. Not much, but um, if it was bare carbon, it would be lighter. And second, the most important thing is that I'm using data um, DCR fork with D-shaped steer to allow for invisible cable routing on the frame. And this fork plus the fork bung have already added uh, 100 to 130 grams compared to the original ATIS, uh, ATIS fork. Also, I will be using the bar tape. I will be using 30 millimeter tires. And uh, yes, I will not be cutting my drop bars to save some weight. So sorry, ultimate weight winnies, but yeah, that's my approach. That's how it will go. Nevertheless, I should still be able to make the final build way below 5.5 kilograms. I've done some calculations in the Excel spreadsheet, which I usually never do, but in this case I did. And it's really borderline. It can be more, it can be less. I guess we'll find out soon. I'm really excited. I can't wait to start the build and see what the final result will look like, but let's do it. By the way, you can use the timeline to jump between the chapters in the video. In the first video, I was talking about the frame and fork in detail, so you can watch it by following the link above or just search for it on my channel. But in short, I bought a used ATSS Works frame set on eBay. It came without a fork. I sent it to my friend to remove the cable port and repair the hole with the carbon. I then bought the Dacia DCR fork with D-shaped carbon steer. This should allow me to have full invisible cable routing. Then I sent the frame fork and extra light hyper stamp to be painted into white to black fade effect color and applied custom decals with Eddie Merck's words on the top tube and custom twist wheels logo on the head tube. So the combined weight of the frame and fork is one kilogram, 10 grams. And for comparison, my Kalnaga C64 frame on its own without a fork weighs the same. Now let's go through the parts that I have for this bike and then I'll build it and we'll check the final weight. Let's start. Let's start with the simple stuff. I've shortened the fork expanded to save some grams and replaced the standard steel headset bolt with an aluminium one. I will also need to use the special wedge that came with the fork. I will be building this bike using SRAM Access Wireless Group Set and I know I could have built this bike much lighter using Dura SDI 2 Group, uh, but I much prefer SRAM for its simplicity, for absence any cables and batteries within the frame. And also this will be a one by setup. And as you probably know, Shimano doesn't offer 12 speed group sets that can take wide range 10 to 36 uh, road cassettes that I'm planning to use, unless you are happy to modify the rear derailleur. Shifters are the new generation SRAM Force Axis that have been recently released. They are lighter than the first gen SRAM Red and have the same shape as SRAM Rival, which I prefer. I will use the titanium hardware to save another 8 grams and the final weight is just 459 grams and for comparison SRAM Red is 10 grams heavier. Rear Mac will be the SRAM Force. It's a previous generation as I already had it. I have upgraded the inner cage with SRAM Red carbon cage and also swapped all bolts for titanium and aluminium rather than steel and replaced the pulley wheels with Garbaruk. Overall weight of the rear derailleur has gone down by 10 grams. The cranks will be SRAM Red Dub, lightest cranks for adequate money in my view. They weigh just 333 grams in size 170 millimeters, and you can buy them for around 200 pounds used on eBay. Talking of chain wings, I will be using Garbaruk 42 Tooth, which is my favorite chain ring by design and performance. I'll be using a standard SRAM Dub bottom bracket. Finally, the cassette I'll be using, and I'm sure this choice will surprise many of you, would be 
Chinese manufacturer ZTTO. This is a 1036 cassette and the reason I'll be using it because this is the lightest 1036 cassette that I found on the market. 30 grams lighter than SRAM Force uh, in the same size and also it's uh, half price. And guys, just a couple of words before we continue. If you enjoy this video, if you like what I'm doing, don't forget to put a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell button, leave a comment. Let's feed that YouTube engine. This all helps my channel to grow and keeps me going. And who knows, maybe one day I'll be able to quit the office job and do more videos like this. Or even better, and thank you. Now let's move on to the cockpit. I'll be using extra light hyperstem in size 90 mm that was painted in the same color as the frame. This is the lightest and best looking stem on the market in my view and it weighs just 76 grams or just extra 15 grams with a garmin mount. The handlebar I'll be using is the new Bjorn rule handlebar. I was waiting for the proper build for this handlebar and guys from Bjorn made me a custom handlebar that doesn't have holes in usual places but instead it has a hole at the stem area so that the hoses can exit here go inside the stem and then through the fork steer into the frame and it looks amazing Bjorn Palka seat post that I cut to 320 millimeters and I've used the same seat post on my cross-country and gravel bikes without any issues so I can trust the quality and strength of it and as some of you might have guessed, I'll be using Bjorn Fully Carbon Saddle. You might think that this is pretty uncomfortable, but I've actually done several thousand kilometers on the same saddle on several bikes. And it's one of the most comfortable ones uh, for the road bike. The shape, the width, the cutout of the saddle, everything works perfectly fine with my S. Next, and probably the most interesting part of the whole build, is the wheels. I custom built them using extra light hyper smart hubs, the lightest six bolt hubs on the market. These hubs are a piece of art made in Italy, best spinning hubs I've ever had so far. The rims I use are light bicycle AR25, which means they have 25 millimeter profile and they're actually pretty wide. They have 24 millimeter internal rim width and as you can see i don't have internal spoke holes that means i don't need to use a tubeless tape i can save another 30 grams compared to the rims that have spoke holes these wheels are also gravel approved and you might remember that i used the same rims on my gravel wheels when i was building my sire um, dream gravel bike and to build the lightest possible wheels, I need to use the lightest possible spokes. And you might think that this should be bird, but no, this is actually brisk ultralight spokes made of carbon with titanium ends. And these spokes are lighter than bird. Believe it or not, but these wheels weigh just 845 grams. Yes. This is just unbelievable. I think it makes it the lightest gravel ready wheel set on the market. Let me know in the comments down below if you know of any other gravel wheel sets with the same characteristics, same width or even wider, um, doesn't need the tape, six bolt design hubs that weigh less than that. I tried to find it, I couldn't, but maybe I missed something. The new Corsa next tires i've tried them on on my kalnaga and i really like them i like the how they roll i like the puncture resistance uh, this is a tube only tire because i'm planning uh, to use them with the two liter tubes and the good news is you can now buy two liter tubes with the black valve moving on to the brakes similar to other road and gravel uh, bikes that i've built before i'll be using hope rx4 plus calipers they are lighter, they perform better than SRAM, and they also look great. So it's just a no-brainer for me. The pedals I'll be using are Speedplay with titanium axles and titanium plates and bolts. And I also have Wahoo pedals with the power meter. The chain that I'll be using is a SRAM Eagle XX1 in black color and you can see that it already had been hot waxed. 
By the way, I was recently looking for an easy solution to hot wax the chain and I found this brand called Cycle Wax. They uh, sell kits that basically include everything you need to hot wax the chain and it was super easy to do that. I think I spent around 20 minutes to hot wax like five or six chains from all my bikes. Uh, so check them out. Okay, it's time to shut up and finally start building the bike. Is everything fine? Yeah. I'm a bit tired now, so let's use a bit of magic. One, two, three. Dana, I need to make some magic. Yeah. And because I'm not a true magician, I need you to go out of the shot. Finish the bike and I'll see you tomorrow. Let's check the final weight of this build. I believe I can fly. Whoa! 35 grams below 5.5 kilograms. I'm super excited. I can't wait to take this bike for a spin and see how it feels to ride such a light bike. This is one kilogram lighter than the lightest bike I've ever built before. The time has come to finally replace the question mark was the actual number. My original plan was to have two sets of wheels for this bike. One is the climbers one, which I have on this bike right now for ultimate lightness. And the second wheel set uh, built on light bicycle WR45, rims with 45 millimeter profile, um, extra light hubs and carbon spokes. 
uh, as a second aero wheel set. I didn't manage to build the second wheel set in time for this video. And just to give you an idea how the bike would have looked with 45 mm profile rims, I asked my friend Ed to give me his wheels that I built him earlier this year on exactly the same rims. And let's check it out. Wow, what the difference the wheels can make to the looks of the bike. Let me know in the comments down below what version of the bike you like more. And in general, what do you think about this build? I will now have a very difficult choice to make, which bike to keep. Uh, the newly built specialized 8SS Works or my Kalnaga C64 that I really like, but that is almost 700 grams heavier on the same set of wheels. And it's not an easy choice, believe me. Uh, I guess I will have to ride both bikes and decide. But if you had to choose between these two bikes, which one would you go for and why? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and my Instagram account, twisted underscore wheels, where I will post some more photos of this bike and also other projects I'm working on and maybe some videos from the test ride of this bike. So yeah, let's keep in touch. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Cheers.